how much greater His grace is. Because if you think you only sin a little bit, yes, we got it pretty good. You know, Monday was, mm, okay, a little dip there. You know, Tuesday, oh, yeah, look at that. You know, you know and, it, and all, all in all, it kind of averaged out to kind of a, but you know, it was not bad because the week before it was more of a, I did pretty good this week. Therefore, I don't really need much grace. And someday, it'll be good to me. No. 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 When you understand how much like God you are not, how much you miss the mark, then grace means all that much more. And you can sing a song like Amazing Grace, how sweet a sound it saved wretch like me. And so this is what Paul's doing. He's saying, alright, sin came into the world through one man, and it went everywhere. And every man dies. Well, that's another one. You know what the word death means? It means separation. That's what it means. When you die, your body and your soul are separated. Eternal death is eternal separation separation from God. That's what that means. If that's what death means, what does life mean? That unity. That relationship. He says, alright, death reigned in sin. It had its way. That's what reigning means. We don't like that word. We don't like the idea of somebody reigning over us, right? But reign, somebody who reigns is somebody who has their way. No one's there to tell them, no, you can't, no, you can't, no, you can't. They reign. You say, this team reigned over this other team. They just did whatever they wanted to. Sin reigned under the law. Righteousness reigns under grace. Reigns. This is the same chapter, remember, it was last week where he talked about, you know, Jesus who died for you, now he's alive. How, how much more? How much greater is it to be with peace with God and have God on your side? How much, how much better that is? How much better would it be for grace to reign in your life, for righteousness to reign instead of sin? Okay, door one, door two. Which one do you want to be in? You've got... Grace covering everything. Everything. Because that's how big God is. He's big enough to cover everything in your life. And not just your life, but the person sitting next to you and maybe not the person behind you. No, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the person behind you too. He's big enough to cover that too. And the guy standing in front of you. That's how big God is. He can cover all of that. It is so much out of balance with what happened when sin came in the world. Now this incredible amount of sin out there. And we know because of the law how much sin is out there. We understand. And now we see that we want to stand in door number do we want to stand in grace? Right? What's Paul doing in the second part of Romans chapter 5? He's trying to let you understand what the law was about. The law was so we could understand how much sin is in our life and in our world. All the way around. It was there before. It's there even without a law. We are not like our Creator. We have missed the mark. We don't treat each other the way our Creator treats us. Do we? We don't love the way He loves. We love conditionally. We don't forgive the way He forgives. We forgive conditionally. Oh, I will forgive them if they... If they say they're sorry, just right. If they suffer, just enough. I will forgive them if... 
They act just like I act. They dress like me, talk like me. I will accept them. If. You see the difference? We miss the mark all the time. We come on Sundays to acknowledge that God is God and we are not. That is the very definition of worship. That's what the word worship means. To bow down, to prostrate yourself, to acknowledge that this is God and you're not. And we go out and we try hard not to play God all week. We try to give each other enough courage to last the entire week without taking up the job description of God and allowing God to be God and us to live by trust. That's what we do. Where does law come in? We can know how sinful we are with the law or we can know by just looking at Jesus because now we have revealed to us the glory of the knowledge of God. We read the last part of this chapter again. The law was added so the trespass might increase, but where sin increased, grace increased all the more, so that just as sin reigned in death, so also grace might reign through righteousness to bring eternal life through Jesus our Lord. What reigns in your life? Well, if you're living in grace, it's the righteousness that comes from Jesus. And when you have that, when you acknowledge that it's all from God, then you can begin to start, to commence, to love the way that He loves, to forgive the way He forgives, to accept the way He accepts. To be patient the way he's patient. When you look at Jesus and see the glory of God, you can say, I'm so glad God is not like me. And I want to be like God. I don't want God to be like me. I don't want him to be like me. And I will not impose my law, whatever it is, wherever I got it, no matter how good it is, Short, simple, or long, long, and complicated. I will not impose that on anybody. I will offer them the grace that reigns in my life. You know where Paul's going to go from here? He's going to answer the question in the back of your mind right now. The question in the back of your mind is if we really give up law, if we let that go, well, then how are we going to control our behavior? How are we going to know if we're making it? How can we know if we're towing the line? How are we going to control our behavior? Well, that's chapter 6. You're going to have to come back. Or read ahead. That's okay, too. The important thing to know is that sin can reign in your life. If you want to hang on to some kind of law, our grace can reign in your life if you want to stare at the glory of the knowledge of God in the face of Jesus and accept what he's done for you. And if you know your sinful nature, then what we do, what we share together, the communion, the Lord's Supper, what we have in common will mean something to you. And as you pass it to the next person, you know that it means something to them. And you know that it means something to the person in the next aisle. And you know that there's people out there that don't know how good it feels to know that grace can reign in your life. And you'll have. You'll have good news to tell them. Let's bow to God. Dear God, we ask, we ask for the grace. We ask that we could keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. Father, we ask that we could give up any kind of system, any kind of set of rules, any kind of law. Father, we ask we ask for the strength to go through this week and the next week and the rest of our lives acknowledging that you are God and we are not. And Father, we ask for the grace to give each other during this time. We ask this in Jesus' name.